This program contains adult content. What is Eric God? A big atheist. Really? What, am I an idiot? Come on. But yes, it would be nice if you could throw your sins and your responsibilities on someone else. But it's not true. It looks like far left lunacy. I don't believe that it's true that religion is moral or ethical. You don't need to follow anybody! It's not human intelligence! If someone doesn't value logical consistency, what logical argument are you going to give them that will demonstrate that they should? Hello and welcome to the Godless Revolution. Today is Monday, April 1st. It's April Fool's Day. I keep forgetting gotcha. that. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, I need to start the timer, Ryan's point. And I'm trying to be all nonchalant I about know. it. And you gotta vocalize it. Now you're embarrassing me. Well, we're on we're on video, and so you're doing this and people are gonna know. <laughs> yeah, but it's over. You can't, can't, see, it can't see me. Oh. I remember going I went down to the oh, basement. Well, I can't see what you're yeah. seeing. So I, <laughs> I went down to my basement this morning and I told my wife, I'm like, honey, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm pregnant. <laughs> She's like, really? I'm like, that's the best I can come up with. Get the, I hate this fucking day. <laughs> I, yeah, I do too. Like anything I see online, I'm like, I don't know that I can believe that. It sounds bullshit. And, and I had compa- two companies send me fucking stupid shit for April Fool's oh. Day. One of them was Jabra. Like I, yeah. I, you know, I have my Jabra headphones. Who, you, so I get emails from them and they, they were introducing the duo, the Jabra duo. Whereas basically a, a set of headphones with a, a larger band that you you can share with a friend. So oh, one's geez. got it over here and their heads are together. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm not going to – like, <laughs> obviously that's bullshit. But then there were – I don't know. I can't I, remember what the other ones were. I don't think it's it's funny for corporations to be doing that to sending out emails because if people take it serious. I mean, it's a, I know it's meant as a joke. It's supposed to be lighthearted. April yeah. Fool's, whatever. Yeah. The but, only one that I like that does it is uh, Think Geek. Like every year they come out with a fake product, but they actually end up selling it too. Like, <laughs> they came out with like unicorn meat one year. Oh, oh yeah. And then the end, it was like spam, spam with, right? with like oh. litter in it and stuff. Yeah. And you, they came out with the, the Tauntaun sleeping bag where the zipper is a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> and they actually came out with it. I'm like, well, fuck. Okay, great. You know? Keep doing that shit. That's kind of cool. See, that is cool though. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought of the, oh, the other one was there's a little mouse thing that I bought or, well, Tracy got it on Kickstarter a while back called Swift Point. It's just this teeny tiny little mouse that I use for work and stuff. And so I get emails from them with different products associated with this teeny tiny little mouse. And so today they sent out ones with like new accessories for your Swift Point. And it was like a corkscrew and know, scissors or a bottle opener or stuff. And it's like, that's just dumb. You're, wa- I've, you're wasting my time. Yeah. Be more creative or actually come out with something that would be kind of like that. <laughs> like that bottle opener. I kind of want that. Yeah. <laughs> give me a product that I'd really want and yeah. then, then make not that give it to me. And then not give it to me. Yeah. That's a good way of making people demand your shit. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, what have you guys been doing for the last little bit? We didn't have a show last week because of stuff. Yeah, your your house was Because leaking. reasons. I got stuck up in Idaho. Oh, yeah. What oh, part? yeah. You weren't going to be able to make it here. Oh, yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. I didn't get it. So the funny thing is on the way up. I thought he said to go towards Idaho Falls. He meant, uh, no, you mean, no, the other way he said, you thought he meant twin falls, twin falls, not Idaho falls. Uh. So I started driving towards twin falls and I finally get the address and I'm like, yeah, that's an opposite direction. I got to go the opposite (laughs) way. Oh dude, I'm, I'm on Google maps from the time I back out of the driveway. (laughs) Well, so I was like Like going to work. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like 45 minutes late. So then on the way home, we had been there for a while. We were there. Took Things took longer than expected. Hmm. Coming back, I'm like halfway home, stopped at a gas station with my buddy. Did you go to Lava? Hmm? No. Go- <laughs> but he had blood sugar issues. <laughs> like he's not, he's not a full-blown diabetic. He just knows, hey, I need to get some orange juice in me. My blood hmm. sugar's low. Yeah. So I stopped at a gas station, did that. And I'm getting back in the car, and I see my other buddy called who was driving as well. I was like, hey. He's like, yeah, you won't believe it. I, I'm, I drove to Canada. I'm like, haha, funny, funny. You're making fun of me for getting lost early. He's like, no, I just drove. 100- I'm at the Canadian border. He goes, he goes, <laughs> goes, no, we just passed a, st- a sign saying we're about to enter Yellowstone National Park. He goes, I've been driving 90 miles an hour for the past hour in the wrong fucking direction. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you people who don't use the GPS everywhere? That's what I said. I'm like, did you go under the overpass and get on the freeway? He's like, no, I just got right on the freeway. I saw him like, yeah, you went north instead of south on I-15 <laughs> or 84 or whatever. He's like, yeah, I figured that out now. 
Yeah, I I have always had a weird. I get turned around really easy, especially when I'm not in Utah. Oh like if Jesus! I'm, and you're traveling anywhere outside of Utah. Oh yeah. Like, okay, which way is west? Yeah, like if Fuck, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> if I don't have the mountains as a reference to let me know, the mount, you know, the big mountains are in the east, the smaller mountains are in the west. If I'm between the two, I'm heading north or south. Heading at the big mountains, I'm going east. <laughs> heading at the little mountains, I'm going west. If I, yeah, if I am anywhere else. I get turned around so fucking easy. And if it's dark and I can't see the mountains, I get turned around really easy. I just know when there's a sign for the, when you go on the freeway, yeah. it has an N or an S or a W or an E. And I just had the direction I need to go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I have Google maps up on my phone, like the whole time I'm driving just about anywhere, especially because there could be an accident or whatever. And it automatically reroutes me and stuff. So I just, I'm just like, Google told me to go this way. Yeah. I'm going to go this way. I don't even think sometimes I hate because I'm like, I don't have any choice but to go this way, you motherfucking Google. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tracy is a terrible, terrible navigator. Like, if she's in the car with me and she's trying to give me directions somewhere, like, she'll wait until we're right at the turn to tell me that I need to turn somewhere. She's like, oh, you need to turn here. And I'm like, oh, the road that we just passed? That was there's like, your exit. Right, right back there that we were that we were <laughs> doing 45 at when you told me I needed to turn. No, I can't do that. Um, and so I always have Google running, and she'll try to contradict Google sometimes. And she's like, "No, don't go that way." And I'm like, "Oh, oh okay." Oh, I, and I'll I'll turn somewhere else. And she's like, "Oh no, wait, I was wrong." And I'm like, <laughs> "Damn it! I should have known." How many times will I have to learn this same lesson? See, and I like to give directions two directions ahead and mm-hmm. receive them the same way. Yeah. So if it's like, hey, you're going to exit at this exit, then you're going to take a right up here. So that way I know which lane to be in to think ahead and be like, oh, I need to be on the right side. So I'm yeah. not in the left lane. And we're a block away. Like, oh, by the way, you need to be in the right lane. Like, Fuck! motherfucker, now I can't get over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that happens. What, what were you in Idaho for? You were filming, uh, just filming some, some stuff. Ah, yeah. okay. So trying to film some promo stuff. Some promo stuff for for, for, our, for our project. Oh. We had a guy up there with a monster truck bus they won't let us play with. A monster truck bus? Like yeah. a school bus? Like a school bus. That Not was like a, a short bus, like a regular like size bus? Like a regular bus? size bus. We oh. call it the Columbine. <laughs> it's, it's actually his... It's, it's his <laughs> I wouldn't want Sandy Hook, but that's just too dark. <laughs> <laughs> but it's his, uh, it's his monster truck uh, uh-huh. uh, zombie bus. Monster truck zombie bus. So what the guy does is he actually uses it for a business. He takes it to like monster truck shows, but when those aren't going on, he hooks up paintball guns to them. And then when they do like the cornfield mazes and stuff, they have things set up with people dressed as zombies and you can pay to go on the bus with paintball guns attached to the side of the bus and shoot the zombies as the bus goes through this course. Oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it I'd does. hate to be the employee of the fucking cornfield. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> well, they have certain employees that get dressed up as zombies as, as targets. Just get pelted with paintballs. Paint <laughs> yeah. Those fuckers hurt. He said they, they don't turn the paintball guns up very high, oh, so it's okay. not like they're like full on. Funk. Yeah, so they're not like. You're lobbing it out. Yeah, I guess not he said like 100 feet per second. Yeah, yeah. He said they're, they're usually tuned to like 50, 50 FP or 50 PSI or something like that. Ugh. Instead mm. of going the full. I've never been hit with a paintball. Yeah, no? they can hurt. Oh, they fucking hurt, especially if you're playing against a pro. That uh-huh. shit hurts, man. <laughs> I caught like five in the mask one time, two in my uh-huh. hand. Oh, like this guy had a uh, paintball gun that was it was semi auto, but he had that trigger thing. Yeah, where he could, like, electronic trigger. Flutter yeah. the trigger on it, like it had an electronic yeah, gate on it. It's like it goes full auto. So it was like twelve what? paintballs heading my way, like just in a second. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and most of them hit my mask and my hands, where I had the gun up to my face to aim a little bit better. Oh no! So like five in the mask, where the shit went in your teeth and your yeah. mouth, and it's, it's edible. It tastes like soap. It's nasty. Mm. And then, like, it caught my, I didn't have gloves or anything on, so it, like, caught my knuckles and shit. It was, it hurt so fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like paintball until I got tagged by a couple that really fucking hurt. Like, you get one on the tailbone, you're just like, motherfucker! Oh, oh I got a bruise there now! <laughs> I, I used to shoot cheaters in the genital region. <laughs> Ball shots. <laughs> oh, yeah. On purpose. <laughs> and people hated it. And I'm like, if you would have called your shot when I shot you the first five times, I wouldn't have shot you in the dick. <laughs> dick shot. <laughs> hmm. Well, what have you been doing, X? <laughs> X is sitting in with us now. <sighs> Matt, Matt is out for uh, uh, one of his kids' Birthday? birthdays. So, X. You know, more of the same. Just coming on. Producing podcasts and making YouTube videos. That's. 
80 percent of my life these days it feels like you're you're all over the place man <laughs> where so where can people learn more about utah outcasts if they are unfamiliar with it well you can find utah outcast at utahoutcast.com you can find us at patreon.com slash utah outcasts you can also find us on youtube twitter reddit well i don't do much with the reddit uh facebook but i fucking hate facebook these days <laughs> yeah <sighs> just about anywhere so i mean we're out there. I mean, easy to all, find. Yeah, I mean, you type up Utah Outcast and you're gonna find us. So, and you, you're prolific as far as getting shit out there and dicing it up into smaller bits and pieces and <laughs> stuff for YouTube and adding comments and responding. I'm like, you got a lot of time on your hands, or you just <laughs> never sleep. I, I, I can't decide which. I, I don't sleep. <laughs> so, do you know there's also a car club with your same name? No. The yeah, Utah Outcast. There's a, there's a Utah Outcast car club. Well, I guess I'll be starting that business up here pretty soon and be sending out a cease and desist letter. So, <laughs> hooray! Your stupid little car club needs to change its name, fuckers. <laughs> Hope you didn't get all customized logos and. Oh, they shit. do. Uh, uh, I can be petty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Andrew, are you listening? <laughs> I'll pay your hourly rate. <laughs> well, I wonder what he charges. It's considerable. Yeah. <laughs> We've looked into it. Yeah, I, I haven't looked into it because I figured it would be considerable. <laughs> um, no, yeah. I put out about 10 to 12 clips a week on YouTube. I mean, the podcast, shitloads of extra stuff for patrons out there. So, I mean, a buck a month and you get like live streams that are just for patrons and stuff. So. We had one this last week where it went an hour where we went from like talking about food to fundamentalism. So we were just, hmm. it ran the gamut. It was yeah. fun. So. <laughs> well, and, and you guys do video and stuff. We don't do video either. And yeah, so I wish we to, didn't have to, but so you get to see all of your, all of your lovely faces while you're doing the talkings. Yeah. And Kyle and Felicia are so much more pretty than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but you got that nice black background that makes you look mystique. Yeah. It, you know, mysterious. <laughs> I was going to say mystique because she's good looking too. Mm. What's just funny is that there's so many people that give Kyle shit for wearing like eyeshadow and eyeliner and stuff. And they're like, Oh, where's the, the femme guy wearing the guy liner? And he's yeah. like, well, I have eyes. I don't have guys up there, you know. <laughs> he catches so much shit from the guys that are like the cis hats that just absolutely hate anybody putting on makeup. You know, it's like you know, glam rock's been a thing for like sixty fucking years, right? Well, and, <laughs> the, and that like everybody that you ever see in any play, almost anywhere, has, has makeup. makeup on. You know, presidential people like Trump wears fucking makeup. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Not just bronzer. <sighs> no, but it's good times. I, I really like what I do. I mean, otherwise, why the hell would I continue doing it if I didn't enjoy oh, it? Oh, yeah. 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 If you're not having fun doing it, why the fuck would you continue doing it? Right. And, and we're planning a trip to the Ark. I'm sad that we're not going this year to the oh. uh, AA Con because it's right next door. Yeah. Did you hear the, uh, the, what the hell is it? They're having at the new Answers in Genesis Answer Center that's at the Ark Encounter. They're having a, uh, what the hell do you call it? A seminar called Answering Atheists. At what? the same time, you guys are there for AA Con. I oh. roll, and it's uh, it's featuring Ray Comfort oh, and boy. Ken Ham and uh, Banana Man most and of the Wolverine, scene. Amish Wolverine. Yeah. The, the people who know so much about, <laughs> well, wait, the, they don't. What I keep joking about <laughs> on the show is like, not a single goddamn atheist is invited to this answering atheist thing. Like, if you wanted to answer an atheist, why wouldn't you have one there? An be atheist. like, what's your opinion on this? Well, I'm against that. You know. Why wouldn't they just cut? It, it really bothers me when they make disingenuous, disingenuous and straw man arguments about shit. And they, and then they'll just outright lie about different things. Like if you had the truth, if you had, if you had evidence, you would point to the evidence. You wouldn't need faith, right? And if you had evidence, then you would just point to that and you wouldn't straw man an atheist position to say that, oh, atheists, you know, worship Satan or they just want to sin or whatever. Like, why don't you? Ha well, how about you talk to an atheist and find out what why believe. we believe what we believe yeah. or don't believe what you believe? I especially love it when they. And why can't you just have a fucking honest conversation about it instead of being a giant fucking cockhole? <laughs> when they completely like straw man what atheism is, it's like yeah. guys, it's, mm -hmm. it's the answer to one question, really. I yeah. mean, it informs a lot of other worldviews that come from that, but atheism itself is the answer to do you have belief in a god or gods? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Not they're like, well, atheists believe this. It's like. No, N no, some, do, <laughs> some, maybe a majority might, some might, and that might mm. inform their humanism or it might inform, you know, any of the other kind of isms or ists that they have, but it's not necessarily a worldview. Yeah. You know? It's not all encompassing. No, fuck no. You know how many 
shitty atheists that I know that like still believe oh, in God. ghosts and <laughs> dude, I, I argue with atheists much more than I do religious people these days. <laughs> You'd be so shitty about it. Oh yeah, they think they got out of the the one paper bag of a question, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> wet paper bag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now they're like, I'm much more. Now I'm, I know everything. I'm better than you. I'm big brained. Yeah. <laughs> I evolved. Yeah, that shit <laughs> oh, bothers me. It's fun. <laughs> you see what the but the thing is like the uh, the religious right they are, you could see trends coming up when you're paying attention to. Uh, a lot of the things they're talking about, like a couple of years ago, it was uh, trans issues and, and mm-hmm. LGBT issues. Now it's the fact that they have declining attendance in their churches. And how are we going to win back the kids? Satan's winning. Oh, that's the kind of shit that I'm hearing right now, too. Yeah. And so it's like, hey, we're winning. Hey, <laughs> nobody cares about your stupid shit. Hooray. I don't understand how they can say dumb shit like that and not think about like not take a second to think, well, why would that be like if Satan is winning? Like, if you actually believe in a literal Satan that God created and, uh, like, the whole fucking thing is just stupid. <laughs> but to say that, oh, Satan is winning. Well, why is he winning? What happened to your all-powerful superhero yeah. <laughs> in in the sky, man? Why the fuck isn't he stepping up to the plate? Why Why would Satan have an advantage over God? God fucking created everything. He's all-powerful. He could get rid of him like that. He could do a fucking Xanos and just fucking get rid of Satan and all evildoers everywhere, but he's winning? What the fuck? Well, only because my friends are going to give me shit if I don't correct you on it. Thanos. Thanos, sorry. <laughs> yes, that's correct. That's what I meant to say. I would call him I was Thanos. just checking to see if you were, if you were hip to what I was laying down, man. Cross between Xanadu and Thanos. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. I appreciate that. I was trying to... I, I even when I said it, I was like, "That's not quite right." Well, I think. with Matt not here, we can actually talk about this guy. Kind of so, uh, yeah, and he's gonna listen. He'd be like, "That fucking guy, motherfucker, yeah. motherfucker." <laughs> There's another point. I'll ask you when we're not recording. Uh, but what, Captain Marvel? Yeah, uh, not was, Captain Marvel, but the whole universe. Maybe I'll just say it. They fucking ruined a, 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 a something in the trailer. For the newest, uh, don't believe their trailers. Never fucking believe their trailers. Well, no. Well, they showed somebody. Who the last time we saw him was stuck in an itty bitty tiny universe and we don't know how he got out. Well, you still don't know how he got out. It just True. shows that he's out. But and, it shows that he's out. But, but if you really wanted to go with it, yeah. it's a little Ant Man and Wasp thing. He goes to the microverse and everybody gets snapped out of existence and he yeah. can't find a way out. But you remember Michelle Pfeiffer before he went in there's like, be careful for the time something that's in there. And it's like, oh, oh gee, I wonder what he's going to trip into when he's down there. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, I couldn't uh, foreshadow that anymore. Watch out for the giant mystical portal that's going to lead you somewhere else. You don't know what you don't want to go there. <laughs> Stay away from this specific thing. Plot device. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I just was surprised they actually showed him in the trailer versus being more mysterious. But with they, his... the way they made it showed those that he's there at that time. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking he was he tro- he tried to show up at the Avengers compound lots of years before that. And so they're seeing it on archive and they're like, wait, when was that taken? <laughs> so anyway, I'm not going to I don't want to talk about that because it's not out yet. And I don't want to have head yeah. <laughs> going into movies. You people fucking ruin movies for yourself by watching trailers and stuff. Don't try to guess what the movie is. Let the movie happen to you. Yes. Let it wash over you. Well, yeah, because ultimately you don't have any goddamn control over it anyway. You get to choose whether you enjoyed it or didn't at the end. You know? Yeah, that lawsuit got got canceled. Which one was that? The Angel Vid thing. <laughs> oh. They lost. Who what now? The company that was in Provo that was taking the movies and editing them mm. and then selling those edited copies of the movies. Like, so that so Vid, used, Vid Angel. That's Vid Angel, yeah. Vid so, they would, it, so there used to be Clean Flicks and yeah, they got shut down. They got no. shut down. Pure Flix is still a thing, though. Oh, is really? It? Pure Flix is the, the, the Netflix for yeah. uh, evangelicals. Ugh. That's what uh, the guys from... Um, uh, Puzzle and the Thunderstorm used to watch all their shit. Ew, gross. Yeah, so they have to pay for it. I'm like, ew. ew. <laughs> <laughs> but Vin Angel would like, they would, you would pay them You'd pay that- a membership fee for it or whatever it is for the yeah. movie, pay them 20 bucks. And then you get to watch the movie that they had a physical copy of that they edited so you could see all the stuff cleaned up. Yeah. And then they resell the copy back to somebody else. So it only costs you like two bucks in the long run. So they lost their lawsuit and they have to pay a couple of million dollars. Yeah. Back because to, they don't own the copyright to be able to 
they physically they change the film. Not so much that it's the they can't uh, exhibit it. They can't show it to massive crowds or stream it to other people without having the right to do so ahead of time. Yeah, they didn't have any copy. They, but they're saying, yeah. well, we don't have to follow the copyright law because they bought it. They asked us to change it. Mm-hmm. Like, no, that's not how this fucking works. No. So what they're doing now, th- now that they're not doing movies anymore, because the the House of Mouse got a hold of them and they're going to shake them out for like twenty million dollars or something <laughs> like that. Uh, now they're doing editing of other streaming services. So like Netflix programs and stuff, they've run it through their filters to cut out things. And I'm just like, well, we don't have any laws against that right now. How about you just be a fucking adult and realize that you can see nakedness and hear bad words and it's not going to fucking kill you. Or if you don't want to see it, don't fucking watch it to begin with. Yeah. 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 That would be an even better idea. Instead of being like, it, I really want to, I'm a really big Quentin Tarantino fan, but I can't watch it with all the blood and the sex and the titties and the swearing. So yeah. Mormon. Cut out 90% of the film. <laughs> Mormon kids in high school that liked Pulp Fiction. I'm like, how, how can you like, how this? did you see it? How did you get yeah, to how did see you even this, watch you know? it? Yeah. Well, uh, early What's on, the edited version and they do all yeah. the bleeping out of things. And just... <laughs> well, early on when we started this show, we got an email from someone, someone saying we cuss too much. I'm like, yeah. oh, fucking the fuck are you really, talking about? I really like the show, but you know, uh, you guys just seem to curse way too much. And I, I'm, you know, listening in the shop with my kid around or whatever. And I'm like, don't have your kid around we while put, you're listening to it <laughs> or don't fucking listen to the yeah, show. Like I'm not going to put tag on them. Yeah. I put a disclaimer and an explicit tag. How much yeah. more warning do you goddamn yeah, like, need? I curse. Get the fuck over it. Tell your kid that this is how adults talk. <laughs> it's their, their words. Like the, are they going to venture forth into the world at some point and never know what any of these words are <laughs> be taken completely by surprise? Probably. It just, it, <laughs> No. <laughs> that whole swearing swearing <clears throat> and people who get upset about it really fucking bother me like fuck you <laughs> well, I grow I, the fuck up i even had one guy kick me out of a class because i walked in i'm like what the hell's going on here he's like get out of here i'm like what did i do so like, i don't like cussing i'm like what oh the fuck hell? you then <laughs> I, I was pretty much like what the fuck did i say <laughs> <laughs> and i really struggle with it because on the podcast and on the youtubes it's like motherfucker fuck 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 you know and it's like and then i have a professional life where it's like uh well I think that's a very not good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's that's the problem. You can't say that's fucking stupid. So then you're like, what? What are well, other and people I, say? And I, I work with a, a Mormon guy. I'll tell you more about him after we're done here because oh, okay. he's related to something that's been happening in the news. Anyway, I'll tell you that later. Um, oh. Uh. So anyway, like he's one of those guys that if somebody starts going a little bit too blue, he'll be like, guys, language. Yeah. See, in my job, my professional career, I can go it's to someone and go, sound. that's fucking stupid. It's a sound you make with your mouth. It's Jesus a, Christ, man. Unperf- oh, that's the one that he gets the most mad about. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> we tried to do a professional day at work once. Huh? It was laughable. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you tried to do a professional day? No cussing, no dick jokes, no fucking grabbing on anybody. We try to be professional on huh. it. That's not like I, for, it's been my impression that that's like that's all you guys we, do. It, it is all we do. <laughs> so it's, then the, uh, cussing, the fire station jokes. was just very, very quiet. Nothing going on. Well, we, we weren't allowed to tell anybody. So it was our just our crew did it. And there's another crew in that station. So they're all like, what the fuck is up with you guys? <laughs> so, <laughs> do you all join a cult? <laughs> on an average, how often do you guys break into a giant man pile? I mean, <laughs> Well, I mean, I just love going up to guys at work and just see, that doesn't bother me. Look, caressing their see? shoulders and <laughs> except I'm all sweaty, you might want to watch playing out with there. their ears. Yeah. <laughs> some some of them just fucking hate it, so I do it more. It moved. <laughs> uh, let's see. Over the last little while, we've been dealing with a uh, roof leak issue here at the homestead. We've had several bids put in and returned it's going to be a very expensive fix yeah looking at at least thirty five hundred dollars for the lowest bit of bit of fixings um up to almost 20 grand for a full new roof so that it'd be not fun not cool uh so dealing with that really makes you want to rent forever doesn't it i mean (laughs) it kind of does like (laughs) 
I don't know. I, I can't, I can't share walls with people. I don't like, I don't want to know what the fuck people are doing in their house, hear them. I don't, I don't like hearing people stomping on top of me or pounding on walls because I'm being too, like, I like to watch my television and listen to my music very loud sometimes. And if you're in an apartment that's discouraged <laughs> and, and I don't like that. And then I don't like hearing other people fight and argue or just, you know, stomp around their place. It just, I can't. Apartment living is just not for me. Yeah. But it's really nice in that if something breaks, you just call someone and they come and fix it and you don't have to worry about it. You own a home and it's like, well, fuck, I have a, I have a leak in my roof. Who, like, how, how do you even, how do you, how do you adult this? I don't, I don't know how you adult this. Yeah. And duct tape. So then it's, then it's like, oh, I need to have my roof repaired. Roof repair, Google. Roof repair. Yeah estimates yeah. and then finding contractors and then co- and then having to deal with fucking calling them and scheduling that and scheduling it around work and the show and she's been a pain in the ass and there's still <laughs> a bucket sitting in the dining room because <laughs> because I it's going to rain again tomorrow and I yeah. don't know if it's going to leak or not so dealing with that um we had the plumbing issue and then my ex-mother-in-law died over the weekend and it was not a good thing like it's it's usually not a good thing when people die but she was not treated well before she died oh hospice no actually she oh. was living with my ex sister-in-law who is a trained nurse and her husband um they're jehovah's witnesses i don't know if that had anything to do like restricting with medication and them stuff? not and this is you know coming to me third hand yeah. from from other people but yeah apparently they just weren't taking very good care of her she had bed sores she had the circulation to her legs had been cut off for i don't know how long she had a couple black toes gangrene gangrene she had gangrene uh the my so that's probably killed her my children were alerted that their grandmother may be dying soon and that they should go and visit her so they go and visit her and see that you know, the, the condition. condition she's in. And they're like, well, we're going to take you to the emergency room. And the people who are there and supposed to be taking care of her are like, well, they're not going to do anything for her. They're just uh, going to tell you that she's dying and send you back. Okay. Well, we'll see you in an hour as they're taking her to the emergency room, get her to the emergency room. And they're like, oh my God, no, this is terrible. Whisk her away, start doing all this kind of stuff. She'd been in the hospital for a week. They performed a surgery on one leg to get the circulation flowing to that again brought her color back she was doing really well by all accounts they had to amputate two of her toes because of the gangrene sepsis and that started to spread and then they were going to do another surgery on her other leg and apparently sometime sunday she stopped breathing yeah so they intubated her and then she stopped breathing again and she had a dnr and so she died over the weekend Died early Sunday, last Sunday, not like yesterday, but yeah. the one before. Um, yeah. So, and my kids have been having to deal with that all week and that's just rough. I yeah. feel very bad for them. And I can't believe that she was in such poor health living with somebody who's a nurse no. and is supposed to be taking care yeah. of her. It really, it still blows me away. I, I found out all about, all about this at my mother's birthday party last weekend and they were filling me in on all of the details and i just i still cannot fucking believe what a state they found her in and that then they were just the the people who were supposed to be taking care of her were so shitty about it even as they're taking her to the hospital like okay we'll we'll see you back here in an hour Fuck you. <laughs> then she's in the hospital for a week and ends up dying in the hospital. I would check that will. I hope they get charged yeah. with negligence or something or, you know. I, w- I mean, I would think, yeah, negligence, elder abuse, something. Because, yeah, she had bed sores and black toes. Yeah. <laughs> like, that shouldn't happen. She should have been at the hospital a long time yeah. ago. She, should, she shouldn't have had the bed sores to begin with. She should yeah. be moved. I mean, none of that, and- none of that should, should have happened. Especially if you're living with a fucking nurse who's supposed to be taking care of you. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ, man. I just, I was crushed. I couldn't get, I couldn't get over how fucking horrible that would have been. And I haven't seen her for, I think the last time I saw her was at my son's graduation. Okay. Yes. I think that was the last time. 
and so it's been a little while and she seemed to be in good spirits and decent health and yeah it was just and then to hear that she died just kind of suddenly and unexpectedly out of shittiness yeah and probably could have lived a bit longer had she been taken better care of yeah. originally so apparently my ex-wife is not very happy about it at all, of course. <laughs> and who knows? Yeah. We'll, we'll have to see what comes of that because she's not one to let things like that go. She'll, she's very tenacious when she's angry. Hold, hold, hold with, a bit of a grudge. People. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we have an exciting interview coming up with Dr. Hector Garcia. It's a really fun yeah. dude. He's really cool, really smart. And his book, are both fucking fantastic. I really, really like both of them. I haven't quite finished the second one yet, but I'm in I'm in the middle of the very last chapter. So I've thoroughly enjoyed reading that. We'll be talking to him about his new book, the one that I need to write down the full title for. <laughs> you butchered already. Sex in the Power future? and Partisanship. Yes. And then I can't remember the, the second bit of the title. That but. was the longer part. Max Power and Parmesan. Got it. <laughs> uh, so let's get to the interview, shall we? <laughs> All right. All right. Hi, this is Yvette Dontremont, a.k.a. The Cybabe, and you're listening to Godless Revolution. You can find me at Cybabe.com, at my Twitter account, at The Cybabe. And if you've hunt really hard, you can find me at Pornhub. I dare you. Alyssa Armstrong is going to be here within the hour, and she represents Glorious Salvation Ministries, the largest group of megachurches in the country. And this meeting was not easy to get. Oh, no, 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 no. I had to buy three of George W. Bush's dog paintings to get him to vouch for me. No, we all know there's no God, but there is a ton of money to be made in his name. So let's try to act like professionals today. Rejoining the Godless Revolution podcast now. All right. On the line, we have the wonderful, fabulous Dr. Hector Garcia. How you doing? What's up, guys? Good to chat with you again. It's been almost a full year since we had you on the show last time. Yeah, it's great to be back to talk with you guys for sure. I'm, I'm very, very excited to talk to you and to talk about your latest book. Um, what is the title? It's Sex, Power, and... Well, you just mm-hmm. I, I, I just, up, I just totally fucked up Damn. the entire interview. Hi, I'm go, the man. host this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Sex, Power, and Partisanship. Uh, but my Kindle doesn't show me the... the, the full the title. Full title. Our evolutionary Look, science makes sense of our political divide. Thank you very much. I should have had that ready. Mm. Bad, bad host. <laughs> um... It's a hell of a subtitle, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and so just to start out, I, I was telling you before we started recording that I really, really love this book and Alpha God. Um, I haven't completely finished this book. I'm in, like in the middle of chapter eight, but I've I've really, really enjoyed reading it. One of the things that I love about um, your books is that you don't only just relay great information, but you write really, really well. And your vocabulary is amazing. Um, I, have you always written really well, or is this something that you've had to learn along with everything else that, you know, ah, well, first, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I, I'm, I'm glad that it's enjoyable to read. I think sometimes, uh, science writing can be dry, but you know, I, I writing just like one of those things. You just, you just practice at it. You practice at it, read a lot, practice some more now. Yeah, so I think, yeah, that, well, I, I think you're just a, an amazing writer. Like. It's you just you have a way with words when in in both of your books that they're just a delight to read. Like you're you're passing on great information, but it's also just beautifully written as well. Like it's it's like you took a great writer who also had some great science knowledge and then is passing off this wonderful information to you. <laughs> oh, but that's awesome. I think well, I think the sure. ideas for me came first. The ideas have been swirling around and swirling around and swirling around. And then, you know, finding a way to convey that to somebody, you know, to, to the, to the public in a way that, uh, that's entertaining and fun to read. I think that's, that's kind of the order <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah. The main takeaway that I've gotten from the book so far is that it appears that conservatives in general are, I, I, I don't know of a better way to say it than, 
less evolved. They, they seem to be <laughs> their actions and beliefs and, and the things that they do, their actions that they, that they take seem to be based more on fear and that they're more beholden to their biology than, uh, liberals or progressives. Is that a fair characterization? I, th- I think we're all beholden to our biology. Mm. Um, I, I wouldn't say that's necessarily fair in that they're, you know, it sounds like, they're more primitive or something of that nature. But but there is a huge amount of evidence showing that people on the conservative uh, end of the spectrum tend to be more fearful about a wide, you know, of a wide variety of, of, of different kinds of stimuli, more fearful of, of new people, more fearful of germs. In fact, there's a study looking at at uh, brain scans of, of people who are highly partisan and people on the on the far right end tend to have a bigger amygdala, the fear and aggression center of the brain. So, you know, what I do is I, I, I tie this back to uh, several evolutionary pressures. Well, actually, I tie back political partisanship to several several evolutionary pressures. One is the fear of germs or the threat of germs, I should say. The other is the threat of outside tribes. And the other is, is rearing human offspring uh, into, into maturity, into adulthood, you know, because that's, that's, a, that's a huge undertaking that, um, that was a pressure on our ancestors, especially in the fraught environments that, that we evolved in. They were very dangerous. So uh, in many ways, conservatism reflects the dangers of our evolutionary past kind of expressed through downstream, you know, uh, certain policy preferences, things of that nature. So, yeah, well, and that's why I, I, I don't know. And like I say, it's, it's probably not the best way to word it, but to me it was, Oh yeah, they're, they're more controlled by their lizard brain <laughs> instincts and, and biology, <laughs> like stuff they're not even necessarily aware of. And that of course, feeds into everything that they do and all of their interactions throughout their lives. One of well, the things- there, there, there is some evidence to show that, that people on the cer- conservative end are more manipulable. They're more credulous, especially when fear, when fear is involved. So, mm. you know, fear can be a hook uh, to manipulate people on the far right. And this is, this is you know, well-controlled uh, lab research showing this. Uh, well, you know, them goddamn liberals is going to take away my guns. <laughs> <laughs> and they want open borders. <laughs> well, well you it's- know, it's that the, the one message I, I try to convey every time I've been talking about this book is that, look, if you, if you don't know your evolved psychology, if you don't understand your evolved fears, and I think liberals and conservatives have, have different kinds of fears. Uh, I mean, we have the same fears, but I think, I think we're talking about, you know, hmm quantity and emphasis and whatnot but if you don't understand them others who understand them are going to use them to manipulate you so like those fears yeah yeah one one example is is fear of fear of germs so you know our fear of germs falls on a natural curve right and so on one end of the spectrum you have uh, on the far end of the spectrum you have kind of the compulsive hand washer right people who fear Mm -hmm. germs a lot the other end, I don't know, the dirty hippie who doesn't wash. So, so conservatives tend to be on the the, the germ phobic end of the spectrum. That's where you hide the soap. I mean, hide the money is under the soap. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. Um, during the uh, 2018 congressional elections, just to give you an idea of how how these fears get manipulated. Fox News aired a segment. You remember when the migrant caravan was marching up towards our border and the, they were facing you know, an invasion? Yeah. Facing an invasion. It was imminent. And they were going to bring all and, their diseases with them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. That, exactly. So, Those you know, dirty, there were these dirty segments Mexican that they're diseases. dirty. They're going to they're going to bring these diseases with them. Smallpox. Yeah. You know, <laughs> smallpox has been eradicated. But listen, if you have a segment of the population that's more fearful of germs, they're going to respond to that and they're going to vote based on that fear. You know, they're going to vote for those most strongly talking about the border wall and immigration and, you know, xenophobia. So, so these fears get manipulated. They get tapped into. 
Well, yeah, they, they get tapped into and exploited by authoritarian figures who are also conservatives. Do you think that the, the authority, the person in authority who is exploiting those even knows that they're doing it or they're just running on instinct and, and feedback that they receive from the people who are hearing their message? I absolutely think they know what they're doing. I think they know this research. You know, like, do I think, you know, people like Donald Trump know this? No. I, I, you know, I, I, I honestly, like, like so many other clinicians, I wonder if he is, uh, you know, if he's impaired neurologically. But his handlers, his handlers are shrewd and they know this research and they use it. Use it for their political advantage. Use oh, no, it for I'm their having, political advantage. I'm sure. having severe flashbacks of the Reagan administration near his end of it there where he was just becoming more and more increasingly, you know, unstable. Mommy, where's my car keys? Yeah, and he's <laughs> he's essentially at that level where it's the people that are running him that are running shit. It's like W was being run by uh, Carl Rove and um, the fuck Cheney. is Halliburton guy. Yeah, Cheney. Yeah. It's like they just need a useful patsy as their leader. And then meanwhile, everybody else does shit in the shadows. So they're the puppet masters kind of nefarious. Yeah. So in the, in the first chapter, you write that we can observe examples of political instinct blindness in media interviews where, uh, voters holding fervent party leadership or policy stances are stutteringly unable to articulate reasons for their strongly held positions when queried. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, sure. I mean, w w first, what is instinct blindness? So, so instinct blindness is the idea that many of our psychological impulses are, 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 that are evolutionarily arrived at, our wants, our desires, our dislikes, our disgust, things we're attracted to. Um, the reasons for them are, are, are outside of our, of our awareness, usually speaking. You know, so, so, you know, as one example, you know, we, we love our children and we, we have an, you know, attraction to, to our mates. Um, and, and that's just intuitive, but we don't really think of, of the biological reasons that, 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 that those, those attractions and those loves serve. They, they serve to perpetuate our genes across the generations. So that all this goes for our political instincts too. There's so many political instincts that, that, uh, that get triggered. Where pe even among people who don't really understand the po the policies that they they purport to be supporting, and a lot of this has to do with tribalism, mm, you know, yeah. going with what the tribe believes. And people have, t you know, political analysts have talked about this in terms of uh, global warming. Global warming, especially among the right, which tends to be more tribalistic, um, has become a, a badge of tribal commitment. So, you know, people, people have strong reactions to healthcare policy, for example, that they know nothing about, uh, but they know that their tribe supports it. So they, they support it with, with a lot of vigor and a lot of emotion. Um, and, you know, sometimes it boils down to what I'm, what I mentioned in that phrase boils down to political literacy. You know, there were, there were studies showing that a, that a stunning number of, of American citizens couldn't name the vice president. For example, so so that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Speaking about our our you know our how easily we're manipulable, that's a problem. Um, but but it goes deeper than that. It goes deeper than that to these these very primal emotions that light up these ancient parts of the brain tied to you know anger and fear and things like that. Yeah, in in reading the book, there were a lot of things that as I'm reading it. I don't know. I, I had this moment. Well, I, I had this. I experienced this feeling several times while reading the book, which is that as I'm reading it, it seems to confirm everything that I had already suspected or believed myself. And then I find myself wondering, OK, well, am I just falling victim to my own biology and internal biases that I may not even be consciously aware of? How do, how does one sort through those types of issues? when they're reading something like this that definitely fits in my own narrative of how I view conservatives and liberals. Um, but how do we, how do we check ourselves to make sure that we're not falling into the same trap as the, the conservatives who I disagree with so much? <laughs> 
Well, see, and that's a very liberal thing to ask, right? <laughs> <laughs> Am I being open-minded? Am I considering other perspectives? One highly robust finding is that you know political liberals tend to be more empathic. They tend to experience empathy more. And this is this is that whole. We talked about this briefly on on the prior show that that I was on with you with you guys about how you know political liberalism in many ways has a has a, a feminine feel to it, um, and and political conservatism has a more masculine feel to it. First of all, it's it's overrepresent men are overrepresented among Republicans, for example. Uh, you know, conservatives tend to be more hawkish. They tend to be more territorial. Mm-hmm. They tend to be more interested in 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 you Second know controlling right. women's reproductive uh, yeah, capacity. They're, they're, they're the party and, of fuck your feelings. You know, kind of. they're the party of <laughs> fuck your feelings. Right? This was a this was a campaign slogan that came out of the the Trump campaign. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trump Trump for president. Fuck your feelings. You know. Um, so, so what you're talking about is a very empathic question, I think. You know, that question is very empathic, I should say. But, you know, how do we deal with that? Well, um, I, I think personally what I try to do is, is, you know, go by the research literature and, and, and kind of rely on that to form opinions about, about political psychology, uh, whether on the right or the left, you know, because – Science has uh, built-in mechanisms for preventing bias, or, or for you know, it, it, if it, if practiced correctly. So, when I it kind of set me into this spiral of of thinking that I was maybe overthinking it, or that I wasn't <laughs> thinking it through enough. Like, um, you know, so, so you almost cooked your brain. <laughs> well, I start thinking, well, shit, all of this completely agrees with what I already believe. So, <laughs> is this just you know? me taking in something that is confirming my biases already. And then I thought, well, no, you know, the, the, the this fits along with what you just said. Um, I've, I've always had, I've always heard the saying that, you know, the, the people who are crazy don't realize they're crazy, right. Or, mm-hmm. or people, <laughs> you know, insane people don't ever question their sanity versus the opposite where, you know, Sane people, did I just get that backward? That sane people <laughs> constantly are questioning their sanity, right? Like, am I going crazy? Yeah. And so, <laughs> so then I get, just got in the spiral of, okay, well, this confirms my bias, but is it because this is actually true or it's because I want it to be true? And then you've, you've got, you know, tons, tons of notes and references to different studies and, and everything in here. And so then I start wondering, okay, well, has he just cherry picked a lot of this stuff, or is this the prevailing theory and and sense? No, from, the answer is no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, it like you need to go back and well, look, look. some suicidal tendencies. <laughs> you're like, I'm not crazy. You're the one that's crazy. <laughs> look, the the turn you the 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 what you just talked about. That's good. That's a good thing. You know. That is in great contrast to people who don't don't question their biases, you know. Mm. So I think I think the well, more yeah, people and, and who just we've talked went there extensively on the show throughout multiple episodes about how it seems that conservatives are unable for any bit of self reflection, uh, self introspection, self examination of the things that they believe and why they believe them. How how does a person overcome that? Is it just having to gain knowledge about you are biologically predisposed for certain things and that you may have these types of biases and to try to keep them in check and, and make sure that you understand what is going on versus just, I don't know, running off at the mouth like your typical conservative does. <laughs> well, I, I always make the case for making critical thinking a mandatory uh, part of public education. Mm-hmm. So, so learn about our cognitive biases. Learn statistics. Learn how statistics can be manipulated. Um, learn evolutionary sciences because you know th- these are the sciences that uh, that uncover all of our unconscious biases that are so strongly tied to powerful emotions. Make this mandatory. Um, I would suggest that uh, certain. Certain powers that be don't want that, 
You know, that's you know, well, cutting I mean, off. It's evolution. I mean, that's just evolution in there. And you just, <laughs> that's of the devil. I mean, why should we teach our kids about that? We can't teach them the Bible in the school anymore. Sorry. Right. Decide. So, Sorry, so, so, so doctrines that, that forbid questioning are more convenient for the power structure, usually speaking. Yeah. So oh, that works in Utah pretty well. <laughs> yeah. For the most part. Oh boy. <laughs> That's sad. So at, but, and as I'm reading this, I, I recognize that in my youth, I had much more conservative views. You know, I living here in Utah, raised by LDS family and, and being around LDS family the whole time. Um, and living in a very conservative state, I had a lot of very conservative views and I'm not quite sure how I got out of that. I don't, I don't like, I can't point to any one thing and say, oh, well, this totally flipped my worldview on its head. And now I don't have a problem with, you know, people being gay or women seeking reproductive, you know, control over their own reproduction or, um, you know, working and being paid equally to their male counterparts in the workforce. When I was younger, a lot of my views on those things were completely the opposite. And I don't know how I, was able to flip that and, and change those. And if I did, I feel like I would have a much better, a much better example of how to talk to other people who are stuck with those types of thoughts and to get them to change their thinking on it. How do we go about getting people to change their thinking on those things? Especially when, I mean, throughout the book, you make reference to it, you know, being a biological imperative and drive and that a lot of these things are, you know, not only not necessarily beyond a person's control, but beyond their even perception that they're happening. So how do we, how do we get people to spot that and, and to change their thinking? Oh, well, like I mentioned earlier, you know, teaching critical thinking, you know, interestingly, there was a, there was a study looking at, uh, um, highly partisan subjects. And I, I, I can't remember what the variable was. I think it was climate change, but, um, when, when uh, the conservative subjects were primed uh, to, um, I think, imagine first that they had a superpower, their views on climate change changed. Huh. You know, um, so so you know, a lot of a lot of uh, certain beliefs come out of feelings of vulnerability and fear. Uh, I want to say it's climate change, but I could be wrong. But whatever it was, it took a more liberal uh, – the perspectives took a more liberal turn. And, you know, the opposite is true. It uh, can be true uh, among liberals. So, for example, there's a, there's a, a construct called right-wing authoritarianism, which I unpackage in, in, in the book. And uh, this was developed by uh, a team of, of Berkeley scientists trying to figure out, hey, what – how did – how did Hitler happen? Oh. You know, how, to, how, what, what, how did so many people support this man and uh, do what they did in Germany and across, across Europe? So, um, three factors to this, to this scale. One is ceding control up to authority figures, really looking towards authority figures. Um, the next one is conformity, just doing what the person next to you is doing. And, and the third was uh, aggressing against outsiders. And one of the cases I make in the book is that this all has a militaristic purpose. These are all central aspects of military social structure. You do seat up control, uh, uh, you do, you do answer to authority figures and you obey them. Um, you conform to everybody around you. Um, and, and you need all this to perform on the battlefield. If you didn't have this, how quickly, how quickly would a, would an army get slaughtered if, if, you know, troops didn't have to obey commands? We're doing their own thing. Um, but so, so conservatives tend to score way high. It's really, it's really a, a good measure of political conservatism. But during the 9-11 attacks, liberals took a more conservative shift, including on this scale. So, so you know, th these underlying psychologies serve a survival purpose. And Shifts like that are kind of, of, of evidence of that. Now, Does were, that make were, sense? Were those shifts during 9-11, were they like a permanent shift or was it more of a temporarily 
uh, emotional shift towards more conservative, let's go kill those assholes type Temporary of... Temporary insanity due to <laughs> feeling like you're attacked and you're vulnerable and... Well, well, and I noticed too that in the book you mentioned that after the 9-11 attacks, uh, crime in the area dropped precipitously. Dropped precipitously. So we have this impulse to turn inward to the tribe and start cooperating more in order to survive the outside tribe. We've done that for, for you know hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years since before we were, we were fully human. Yeah, except the cavemen didn't have the Patriot Act. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Good movie. I liked it. And I think I kind of stumped on your question, Ryan. What was it again? I was just saying if, if it was more of a, if it was a, a temporary shift for a lot of people or if it, that, that shift was more permanent among right. liberals to go a little more on the conservative scale. My my guess my guess is that it was a, as a, a temporary shift, but I don't believe I don't believe this is what you would call a longitudinal study where they they would ask again in two or three or four years. I, I don't I don't quite recall, but my guess is it's temporary. And I just realized why I stumped on your question is because you were wondering if it was temporary or not, and uh, I believe in the book you you cited statistics saying that crime fell something on the order of forty percent over the next little while. But I'm sure it hasn't remained there. It is. I'm, yeah. I'm guessing that it steadily increased to its original pre nine eleven levels. Right. Right. I would think otherwise, because if you look, violent crime is down across the board. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, but it like overnight basically uh, dropped 40 uh, yeah. percent after the attacks. This is Nick Fish, president of American Atheists. Uh, you can learn more about our work at www.atheists.org. Make sure to check out our national convention coming up Easter weekend in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you there, and you're listening to The Godless Revolution. When did you stop believing in God? I was 12. I drank some of the holy water at church, and it gave me salmonella. Uh, what made you stop believing in God? YouTube comments. Who are the 90% of people who still believe in God? Professional athletes. They're rich, hot, and their bodies haven't betrayed them yet. Their lives are amazing. Why wouldn't they believe in God? Thank you to everybody who has rated the show on iTunes and Stitcher and are following us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And to all our Patreon patrons, you make the show possible. One of the, one of the other quotes that I've highlighted here uh, says that in addition to conservatives being more close to experience and more sensitive to disgust, Research finds that conservatives tend to be generally more fearful. And that's where, you know, I have I have several passages like that that are highlighted throughout the book. Um, and that's what pointed me to perhaps the notion that they just, and I keep saying evolved, and I'm sure that's not the right word. They, they haven't come to the realization yet that a lot of what drives them is fear and and how to get over that and how to change their thinking on things. I don't know that we've really figured out a way to get people to change their mind. Like I said, I, I know when I was younger, I was much more conservative and that has all changed, but I can't point to any one thing. It seems to be a series of you left personal religion. experience. Yeah. It, well, it seems to be a series of personal experiences that have pushed me further and further left, but I'm sure the opposite is true for some on the right, that a series of personal experiences just pushes them further and further to the right. How do we bring people back from, from the edges of both of those things. Well, 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 listen, you know, one thing to understand about our political present is that it ties back to our evolutionary past. And our evolutionary past was a, was a very different place to live than, than, than the environments mo in which most of us currently live. It was incredibly violent for one. Um, Tribes conducting raids on on the neighboring tribe were were incredibly common. We can deduce this from the archaeological record, where we see massacre site after massacre site after massacre site. We can deduce this from looking at contemporary foragers and hunter gatherers, where a, a, a high percentage of men, an astoundingly high percentage of men in these cultures, are 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 killed by by male on male violence. So. Uh, uh, Lawrence Keeley is an anthropologist who looked at who looked at this question, found that up to thirty percent of men in, in foraging cultures are killed by outside men. That's that's an astounding level of threat. So in those kinds of environments, it makes sense to have a, a prejudicial psychology against outsiders. And you know, in in an environment like that where we had nothing like like you know, antibiotics or vaccines or, or, you know, we, we really didn't understand that we were surrounded by this, 
this universe of micro invisible you know microbiology around us it also it also made sense to be germ phobic and it and and which ties into being xenophobic because the biggest vectors of disease were people from outside tribes who could come in with something as simple as the flu and wipe out your entire tribe right um, the question is how much do that does that serve us now now as as uh you know, we, we cooperate more on a global scale now that we do have vaccines, now that we do understand microbiology um, much more than we did before. How much does that still serve us? So, so are they evolved less? I don't know. What, you know, if we were to, to take a shift to a, a more violent, uh, you know, worldwide society, it would be liberals who would seem less evolved, right, with all their empathy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that's absolutely yeah. true. Um, and as I was reading this, it also reminded me of watching things like The Walking Dead, where there is this global catastrophic event that basically most of the people who remain become much more conservative, much more fearful, much more afraid of uh, outsiders, much more xenophobic. And it all just kind of fit with every, like I said, it all just fit with everything that I already yeah. believe. It was, it was almost just like, Hey, Dan, here's a book that confirms everything you already <laughs> think. <laughs> <laughs> Though I find it funny that like it seems to be like once the uh, fear of the outsider gets out of the way, then they start going for the fear of your, they're coming for your women and your children, you know, especially like we had with the issue with the trans bathroom thing mm -hmm. that was going on where mm -hmm. they can't attack them because they're fellow Americans. So it's not xenophobia at that point, but it's like, well, they're going to hurt the ones that you need to protect the most. And it's like, <laughs> no, they just need to pee, man. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also why you need an arsenal of guns. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I just, like I say, a lot of it was just confirming the things that I already believe. One of the things that, uh, that I had a question about, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, you said that, uh, telling the RWA and S SDO do not develop until adolescence when humans reach re reproductive capacity. Can you tell us a little bit more about RWA and SDO, what those, what those are? Well, RWA, right wing authoritarianism, that, that was, that was what I mentioned earlier. It's kind of, it's, look, political parties.